Well, hi everybody. I'm John Rickland, and this is my review of AEW Dark from Memphis, the most digestible episode that AEW has done since they started doing Dark. Honestly, this uh, episode was pretty easy to watch, pretty easy to deal with. There was some good stuff, a little bit of good story building, including uh, something great in the women's division, something that has a lot of potential. I'm not going to say this episode overall was that great, but it nothing on the show really bothered me. There was one match that went on maybe a little bit too long, but this show was pretty damn enjoyable. Uh, they had Excalibur and Dave Brown on commentary. Dave is great. Working alongside Lance Russell for all those years would definitely, you know, show uh, whether you had the skills to be a great announcer or not. And Dave Brown still, after all these years, has such a great voice for, you know, wrestling commentary. I don't think they're going to get him to be on that many more shows, but good God, him and Excalibur were tremendous. I mean, Excalibur was having to lead him a little bit, even though Dave clearly does love wrestling and studied up on this stuff, but Dave didn't seem out of place at all. It was just absolutely great. It was great, easy to listen to commentary, easily the best guest appearance that they've had in quite a while. And we have Shivani and Dasha talking about the Memphis Legends. And then we have Justin Roberts introducing every single one of them, going over a couple career highlights. Uh, the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant. Thankfully, he's still alive. He was able to get, you know, a pop from the Memphis crowd. Of course, his rich history. I'm not going to try to go over the history of every single wrestler that they mentioned because we'll be here all day. And I would need somebody with a little more uh, history on Memphis wrestling. But Jimmy Valiant just for, you know, in Memphis and all over like the U.S. was just so goddamn over. Uh, Kevin Lawler representing Brian Christopher, Jerry, you know, Jerry Lawler's kid. Uh, he got a mention there. Uh, got talked about Dave Brown. He got, he got, you know, a mention working alongside Lance Russell and the le and, you know, the legend Lance Russell, but Dave Brown easily very, very good and very, very, you know, well-spoken on his own. Uh, Shane Russell, Lance's son, um, you know, Lance Russell's career speaks for itself, really does the amount of, you know, history that Lance's name carries in Memphis and actually all over U.S. wrestling. Like, really, he's one of the best wrestling commentators ever, easily, bar none. Lead commentators, whatever you want to say. Lance Russell made Memphis wrestling, you know, what it was because he was able to tell the stories. Even though the wrestlers told it good in the ring, Lance was the guy. He was the perfect piece and the perfect man to tell the stories in Memphis and get so much stuff over. He was basically like how Gordon Soley was to Florida Championship Wrestling or to, you know, Crockett Promotions. Some promotions just have a certain wrestler or, you know, or certain wrestler speaks to them or it defines them. And some just have a commentator that defines them. Lance defined Memphis. Uh, Austin Idol. And, you know, he got to mention there, Doug Gilbert. Uh, Eddie, Eddie Gilbert's, uh, brother, Tommy Gilbert's son, legendary Gilbert family, Rock and Roll Express, the current NWA tag team champions. Good God. What, what is 2020? I just, it's absolutely amazing what 2020 is. And Lanny Poffo, who's the son of Randy Savage and, or the, the son of Randy Savage, Jesus Christ. He's the brother of Randy Savage and the son of Angelo Poffo. Um, I really wish that Randy had been able to be there. Just because Randy at least Randy got you know much more respect from this little video piece or this little piece just mentioning his career and a little graphic and everything than WWE did with the Hall of Fame speech. It's just it's sad that Randy is uh, is no longer here, but it was great to see the Poffos, uh, you know the Poffos remembered and you know paid respect you know except for Lanny who was able to be there for his brother and his and his father to honor them. So we then had a 10-bell salute for the Fallen, and then we get to our matches. Now, this is only like a 54-minute episode, and the Memphis Wrestling, you know, piece was given mm, about 11 minutes, which was nice. We get Brandon Cutler versus Darby Allen, referee Aubrey Edwards. Uh, Dave did great. He seemed pretty well informed on a lot of, uh, the talents. You can clearly tell how much he loves wrestling, how much, you know, he just has this cool feel about him. Uh, it's very nice wrestling. Cutler kept Darby down for a while. Darby had the weird cupping things on the back, you know, like Kenny Omega did. his weird cupping marks, uh, to try and draw out the pain. And it just looked like a bunch of weird hickeys were left all over him. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, 
eventually uh brandon cutler after hitting a leg drop you know slamming darby into the apron the hardest part of the ring even though i think technically as somebody pointed out later the ring post actually is darby would come back he hit a dive and then later would hit the coffin drop one two three not a bad match we then get what was supposed to be nyla rose and uh shanna or shana i think it's shanna um so this is based on uh, Shanna or Shanna having been put through a table by Nyla during some meet and greet thing, and then I believe it was like some I believe it was like something where Nyla had put a referee through a table and then put Shanna through it also, and that got her suspended for the rest of 2019. It's pretty damn crazy. So okay, we're gonna have this match. Nope. Shanna jumps during uh, Nyla Rose's entrance. They have a bit of a scuffle and everything. Nyla takes over with power, sets up a table, goes to power bomber through there. Nope. Shanna gets uh, into the ring and then, you know, tries to knock Nyla off there. Nope. And then hits a spear tackle right through the ropes and her and Nyla go through the table. Okay. Nice little way. They have a bit of a pull apart because neither one can really get to their feet, even though Nyla kind of does. Shanna still wants to fight. This was good stuff. I love this. This is the kind. Give the women more personal stuff. Don't have Brandy Rhodes cutting promos and stuff like that. Give the women something personal. This may be probably the best feud going currently in, um, you know, at least as far as like the women, the best feud going currently and it's involving two women that are kind of underneath, even though Nyla has a great look and Shanna has a pretty striking look to her as well, I think can be somebody they could build around, um, you know, eventually when they give her some quality wins. And then we get an interview with her, but then Nyla interrupts. We uh, get, we get you know, a bit more of a pull apart where Nyla's like uh, saying, I'll kill you. And Shanna should have said, you're going to have to, the whole Brock Undertaker thing, I'll kill you, you're going to have to pull apart. And then Shivani and Dasha run down where Dynamite is going to be featured for the next couple months. Even Salt Lake City on March 11th. So big shout out to Salt Lake City there. Um, I would check their website for all that stuff. But I don't know if they're going to be coming to Seattle this year. And I'm debating on if I'm going to go or not. We then get Sean Spears and Peter Avalon, Tully Blanchard and Leva Bates at, uh, you know, in their corner. Versus the Gun Club. It's Billy Gunn and Austin Gunn. It's father and son. This match was apparent, well, at least the gun club match from last week's dark was apparently cut. Oh, okay, it is what it is. It was fine. I mean, P Peter Evola may have actually cut the best promo that I've heard him cut, and it was just kind of okay, but he mentions Jerry Lawler's restaurant. You know, Jerry, Law Jerry Lawler's the king of Memphis, and he has a restaurant with food so bad that you'll die on, die on the toilet like another Memphis king, referencing Elvis on his birthday, on Elvis's birthday. I gotta admit that did make me chuckle and then even mentioned about, you know, Austin Gunn being the ass boy instead of the ass man because, you know, Billy Gunn's the ass man and this was weird. This was very weird. So there was an ass boy chant going on. I don't know what wrestling is anymore. I'm scared. Please pick me up. I'm scared. So it was mainly comedy. You did have this one point where Sean Spears hit a chop on Billy Gunn and was like, oh, yeah, you know, he did this. And then he turns around and screams because Billy Gunn just no-sold it. So Billy Gunn's made out of freaking granite, 56-year-old granite, good lord. Uh, eventually, it ends with Austin hitting a senton, one, two, three, on Peter Avalon. It wasn't bad. It just, it, it was a typical comedy match. But honestly, again, this episode was pretty enjoyable. Like, you had some nice build with the women. You had, you know, you had a nice, you know, match between Cutler and Darby. And even the, even the tag match wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. So, in the Memphis Legends wrestling stuff, I'm going to have to say B minus. It's still, there were still issues I had with it, but really, B minus is probably about the best grade you're going to get me to get a episode of AEW Dark. But B minus, that's my opinion. So, poll up there, perhaps. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.